2012, he, him and his then girlfriend Tina moved into a fairly modern two-story home in Seattle, Washington. And they, yeah, there's a documentary. Um, yeah, they lived there for four years and they started experiencing poltergeist activity. So almost everything you can think of. So writings, uh, manifestations, objects disappearing, objects spinning in the air, <laughs> um, noises, bangings, symbolic language so yesterday it was really interesting Keith talked about the communication from the poltergeist um, including music blaring music three times of um, a Katy Perry song just the verse <clears throat> about you know if you're playing <clears throat> if you're playing with magic just be careful because we're going to you know once you play with us something like yeah we'll be there with you you can't get out of it, something like that, that sort of message. Um, but yeah, but today uh, we've got another really interesting topic, uh, succubus. So succubus uh, is, has been known throughout history and myths for as long, like a really long time. Uh, and they describe, they, they used to describe visitations at night when people are asleep and they call them demons but they might be other things but yeah they call them demons who have an, a sexual intent so they would uh, succubus for men so like a female demon that would sexually assault or or um seduce the, the men while they're sleeping at night and for females there's the uh, there's another word, not succubus. Yes, incubus. What's that? Yes. Uh, incubus. Incubus, that's right, yeah. <laughs> it's all right, I've had a really, really busy week. So, uh, yeah, incubus. Yeah. yeah, so that's the ma male spirits visiting the females. Um, I've heard of lots of stories from people that have experienced it. So I'm really keen to decipher what they are what they want and any tips on how to reduce it or prevent it. But um, take it away, Keith. Um, he, yeah, I, I'm keen to hear your experience. Uh, thank you, Joyce. So I'm gonna follow the same format of yesterday. Uh, number one, turn off my video, not to take up bandwidth because I'm gonna share my screen and show part two of a, another PowerPoint presentation. Let me uh, scroll down to find that. There it is. Share, that should be seeing my screen momentarily. Uh, slideshow. Okay, can everybody see my screen now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I got your title on my PowerPoint, Joyce. Cool. And just <laughs> FYI, both PowerPoints, I'm going to probably before Monday comes, send it to you, Joyce. You can disperse it to all the attendee lists. Okay. Um, there's going to be links once again to point, as point of reference, you know, because I know there's a lot of information coming in and some of this takes a while to decipher, but. Um, it really helps to listen to those voices that I, I've talked about. You want, it's hard to hear it on a Zoom, but if you click on the links and get your headset on, turn off your background noise in your home, you know, and um, I think you're going to be amazed by the quality of the voices and the content. Okay. So just before I go into the whole the, the succubus, subject I want to pick up where I sort of left off yesterday. So um, I lived in the house, me and Tina, for four years, uh, May to May, 2000, May 2012 to May 2016. So this is move out day. This is move out day for me. This is around May 7th or May 8th of 2016. And um, 
I finally come to the conclusion based on the mass amount of evidence that uh, the UK team had compiled and the United States team had compiled that four years was enough. Uh, we got the evidence. Um, it's time to, you know, get out, if you will. So I had made the decision once my claims or me and Tina's claims had received a pretty good degree of um, being substantiated that it was time to get out. Because once again, the question that I still don't know the answer to when the day I moved out was, will I be followed? You know, there's a percentage of Portuguese cases where people talk about where they are followed, the possibility or the chance of being followed to your new place of residence um, is a possibility. We already know, because I talked about it yesterday, that I've been attacked while traveling on business, which is sort of like being followed, which, well, it is being followed. But am I being attacked because I still live in the home? What happens once I move out? Is there going to be some sort of spiritual cord that breaks, meaning once you've moved out of the home, or it doesn't matter. The spiritual cord, umbilical cord will remain intact. Okay, so before I moved out, this is move out day, I wanted to conduct one last experiment uh, before leaving the house. Um, and the video will be included in the email when I send that out, the link. Uh, I set up, purposely set up, uh, as you can see here, video recording device and two audio recording devices. Because I wanted to see, if any, what voices could I capture if I, left, if I left those continuously running while the movers were moving me out, while I was cleaning and closing down the house, what would the spirits be saying? What sort of commentary would they be saying, if anything. Well, they were saying a lot. Upon review of both video and audio, I always use both to rule the other one out, you know, but if I got voices on an audio, theoretically, I should also have voices on a video. That's not always the case, but I should, especially when they're in close proximity of each other, but that's not always the case. Portuguese can and are good at putting voices on one device, even though it's close to another device, the other device doesn't pick, the, pick it up. So in this instance, I was able to pick up voices, conversations. I can tell you it was about the voices that I captured the most, probably the last hour of me being in the house was uh, a male voice saying the word, saying my name, key. And he would say it in a whispery tone and then repeat it. And as he kept saying, Keith, 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 all of a sudden you hear a joining in, almost like a chorus, if you will, of other voices saying Keith as well. It was, it was very weird, very interesting. I ran it through the paranormal teams for them to vouch for it. And they did. We counted over 65, it's probably more, but we counted, confirmed 65 Keith repeated Keiths. As I'm, you know, carrying stuff out the house, locking up the doors, closing up windows, making sure the movers got everything, signing papers. And you hear it, and they start off with a whisper. And then, therefore, 65 interesting keys, which is my name, obviously. So now I'm at my new place. I've moved I'm out of the Bothell House. This is on May 8th. Uh, the following morning, the following morning, um, I woke up in my new place of residence. You know, I got boxes everywhere, but I had assembled my office and workstation. Um, the early that morning, it had to be about 5.30, that's the time I get up to go to work. Um, I was sitting at my computer desk, not this is my kitchen table, I was sitting at my computer desk a few feet away from my kitchen table, 
checking work email. As I'm checking work email, I keep hearing this tap. Repeatedly over and over and over and over and over. And finally, my brain just like, what is that tapping, that nonstop tapping sound? So I turned around, I got up, I couldn't see nothing. I walked back and forth from the kitchen to my bedroom, couldn't see nothing. I couldn't find where the tapping was coming from until finally I crossed my kitchen table. This is my kitchen table. And I see water dripping on my kitchen table from the ceiling. Now, it, it, it's, it's a lot of puddle. It's, it's a continuous drip. It's what's causing the tapping noise. So I've seen this movie before, but in the Bothell home, but I don't want to accept the reality of what this might mean. Okay, so what I do, as probably anybody would do, when you look up at your ceiling and you see water dripping from your ceiling, this is, this is not a home, this is a dwelling unit. This is a condominium. So I'm on floor one, there's three floors above me. So my immediate thought is I have a leaky ceiling, a busted pipe from the people upstairs. So I called the building maintenance people and they responded immediately. Water leaking from a ceiling is, is a, is, was deemed an immediate response. So they respond about 20 minutes later or arrive about 20 minutes later. The water is still dripping. The water is still dripping, okay? They, after walking into my home, they're in my living room now, now it's about six in the morning, look up and can see with their own eyes that, yeah, you have water dripping from your ceiling. The main engineer, the main technician, building maintenance guy, put his finger on the ceiling where the water was coming from and said, and I quote, it's dry, the ceiling is dry, okay? But we got water, so what he did, him and his assistant, they left my apartment, went upstairs and knocked on the door of the people above me. And to their credit, the people above me let them in to see if they could find a water source. Long story short, uh, they could not find a water source. The building maintenance guy said, number one, there are no pipes whatsoever between floors. There are no pipes whatsoever between the floors. So we can scratch that out the way. Number two, when they bought in, a, they have some sort of plumbing equipment, we call it a water tracing, water seeking equipment that's supposed to find the origin of leaks. When they use this equipment, they could not find any source of where this water was coming from. I would say the drip lasted about, while they were there, about 30 minutes more, longer, and they could not determine the root cause. When the water stopped dripping, they looked at me, and the only thing they could tell me, sort of like what the fire department told me about the poster catching fire, is if it happens again, call us because they have nothing to write in their notes or in their, uh, I guess, report saying there's nothing to fix because we don't know where the water is coming from. It's just weird. Me, having come from the Bothell House, know exactly uh, what this is. Um, so this was day one of living in the new uh, place of residence. So now, when I was talking about yesterday, and, you know, we, we, we talked a lot about the Portuguese activity. I want to, especially with Diane here, I want to sort of give everybody a picture of Keith's life during the haunted. I think well, somebody asked the question, you know, how did me and Tina survive this? How did I survive this? How, how am I still, or why, why or how am I still surviving this? Why am I not, you know, crazy or suicidal or deranged or, you know, hiding under my bed 24 seven. Well, you know, there's, there's, there's the paranormal and then there's Keith's life. Keith's life 
during the day, I should say during the day, uh, is surrounded by friends and family. People I call family, my friends. To the left, you see me and my best friends going we're fishing, we're camping. To the right, as you can see, these are my other friends who are friends to this day, having barbecue at the Bothell House. The picture on the right was taken at the Bothell House in the midst of some of the most torrentious activity. These are friends who know of the activity, who still, out of love for me, chose to still come and interact uh, as a means of trying to maintain a level of positivity and try to maintain a level of, we're not gonna let the spirits beat you down. We're going to be here for you, Keith. So Keith, Linder, myself, has a life. I have friends around me who love me, who love Tina, uh, all successful, all coming from different walks of life. We go to each other's house. This is my friend, Laura. She's standing in the middle with the greatest smile ever. She's the host of a party at her house. She's cooking dinner. And these are all my male friends surrounding her. Once again, this is me. This is the picture on the left is the Halloween party at the Bothell House. You can see in the very far background, the cross that's hanging above the chimney. That's one of the crosses that went missing. But everybody here sort of knows of the poltergeist problem. Of course, they don't want to live it. They don't want it to follow them home, but they're not about to let Keith or Tina get taken up by the spirits. And then to the right is my friend on the left who, have, who I have my arms around. She's one of my best friend's wife. This is her birthday party. And as you can see, you know, we're all having a good time. So, so that's that in a nutshell is just the, you know, the counterweight, if you will, of the darkness that we talked about yesterday and the darkness we're going to talk about tonight, tonight in Seattle. But because guess what? When the sun goes down, when the sun goes down, everybody has to return to back to their respective homes. Keith has to return back to his respective home. And this is where we're going to talk about what happens when the lights go off. Because yesterday was more about the physical. This is gonna be more about the spiritual and emotional, metaphysical, subconscious, because trust me, it's very dark and it starts the minute the sun goes down. So I'm now living in my second place of residence. I'm days, weeks from living in the Bothell home. I've just experienced one of the Portuguese known phenomena of inexplicable water appearances. And now imagine yourself, put yourself in my shoes or my bed of going to sleep or trying to go to sleep. And as you're trying to go to sleep, um, those of you who have pets might already know sort of what this is like. As soon as you lay down, you're not even asleep yet. You feel the mattress indentations all around you. And by mattress indentations, imagine if you have a pet dog, a pet cat, who likes to jump in the bed when you get in bed, and they're making their way towards you. You feel the paw prints the, uh, as they make their way to your side, to your feet. You know, they want to cuddle near the warmth of you. And all sides, particularly at your feet, particularly at the edge of the bed. As the night gets older, the indentations get closer to you. You can sort of say, as you get more sleepier or as sleep is about to take over you, they move closer in. Now, how close do they move? They move extremely close. I'm talking pillow, underneath your pillow, uh, headboard, mattress uh, underneath you. And it's a real indentation. I mean, it's real, 
and to and how I know it's real is you and I, you know, we sit in bed, you know, we always you, you're gonna hear the you're gonna hear that squeak, right? You hear that squeak noise, that squeak sound. That's what you hear. This is literally what you hear, especially if you've already turned your TV off uh, for the night and you hear this and right then and there, because this right here is what I was experiencing in the Boston house. So I was praying that it not, did not follow me, that I would not have to experience it in my new home. Going back to what I was saying earlier about spending money to renovate the Boston home due to the damage, me and Tina had bought three king size beds, brand new, three brand new king size mattresses with the hopes of trying to shake this, what I call the poking and the prodding while sleeping. We were advised that if, if it's true of me being bombarded while sleeping at night, maybe the remedy is to get rid of a perfectly functional working bed. Well, guess what? That did not work. But we have to try, and that's one of the predicaments that a guys sufferer finds themselves in is you, you don't want to leave no stone unturned or no remedy or no good idea at the time unturned because if it works, you're free in the clear. Okay. I would happily pay 2000 3000 4000 US dollars for a new bed if you told me or guaranteed me that it was going to rid my house of this. So I, I, would, I would write a check right now, but it does not work. And of course, now I'm living in my second place of residence. And this is what I feel. Now what comes after this is very interesting or what I coined the, you know, or like to use the term, the disembodied heartbeats. We talked about that at the last session a few weeks ago or a month or so ago about the disembodied heartbeats because if you look at this picture, the indentations that make their way to my pillow, when I go to sleep, usually about 3 a.m., 4 a.m., that's when I can feel, not here, I feel the quote-unquote disembodied heartbeats. Now, of course, I'm not saying that they're literal heartbeats, but there is a pitter-pat. There is a pitter-pat. There is a pitter-pat that mimics your or my or a small animal's heartbeat. And it's very relentless. It's very non-stop. You can put your hand above where it's coming from and you can feel the pulsation. You can literally feel that. Here's another example. This just shows you from, go from left to right at the very top, one, two, three, four, of me laying in bed. The indentations start at the lower extremities, you know, if I'm watching TV, I like to watch TV before going to bed. I like to send a few emails out to friends before I go to bed, a few text messages. And they're there. They're there. You feel them. It's indentation left and right. They're on your shin, they're on your knee, they're on your ankle, they're on your feet. And they're there. And they're poking you, jabbing you in the rib cage, jabbing you in the, in the, in the kidney area. So it could be sometimes, some nights are worse than others. But when they're relentless, relentless, it can be very uncomfortable. It can be very stir crazy. I mean, it, it, it can be very stir crazy. Around 3 a.m., as you see, number three at the bottom, they've migrated upward. They've migrated up to the head area. That's important because I was able to correlate when they migrate upward toward my head area, not only are they poking proud of me and I'm feeling the indentations, I'm feeling the the pulsation, the heartbeats. This is when the night terrors or the nightmares tend to form, okay? Number four is me experiencing both the heartbeats, uh, not mine, theirs, or whatever's, and sometimes being wakened up. You know, I'm waking up literally, I'm crying. I just had a night terror, a tremendous one. And when I wake up, it's like massive, massive pitter pat, massive indentations on both sides of the pillow. You know, it, 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 it's ridiculous. It's so 
So crazy. So crazy. This, when I left the Bothell house, I was, it was never my intent to continue gathering data. I was, I was telling myself when I leave the Bothell house, I'm not going to try to continue recording anything. I'm definitely not going to set up cameras. I'm not going to be using voice recorder equipment. So I sold that and gave all that away because I wanted to sever the cord. I sold beds, I sold mattresses, I sold anything that I felt would be sort of a way in, if you will. It was not until I started experiencing this on a daily or nightly basis. This was not every night in the bottle house. This is weird. This was not every night in the bottle house. It became an every night occurrence in my new place of residence, okay? I must have been in the home about four to five months of dealing with this to where I came with the decision, if I'm going to be suffering this, if I'm going to be experiencing this, once again, like I said yesterday, somebody out there in the world needs to know about this. Somebody out there in the world who studies this on a daily basis, needs to have this data. And the, the least I can do, the least I can do with my background and my wherewithal is capture the data if I can. Because number one, I'm already paying the price. They're already being relentless. So I'm, I'm not, obviously, they're not giving me any uh, leeway. They're not leaving me alone as a result of not studying them because they're more relentless now than they were in, when I was living in the Bothell home. So I said, okay, if they're gonna be bothering me every night, then I need to buy new equipment. I mean, I, I sold my other equipment and bought new ones and said, I'm just going to set up, not sort of like my office, but a mini, I don't know, research bedroom center. And this is sort of what you see right here. Where I moved next to, I went from five bedrooms to two. These two bedrooms are side by side. They both have beds in them. And I set up listening, monitoring, sensor monitoring equipment that's laced along the bed, that's laced along around the, the bedroom to capture anything, if any, the voices, uh, the poking and the prodding, the movement, the high EMF reading. I could tell you EMF readings were significantly high when I put the EMF reader, look at picture number three and, and picture number four at the bottom. The EMF reader, when I put the EMF down near my pillow or underneath the mattress, underneath the mattress, um, we're talking high read, we're talking about high readings, high in the red territory, in the red category. One of the most interesting, probably most underrated EVPs that I captured as a result of conducting this experiment and using multiple voice recorders was the EVP where a male voice said, see how fast he stood up. Now this was one morning about 5 a.m. I got up to get ready to go to work. My devices are running continuously. It's not like I'm hitting the record when I get out of bed. They've been running continuously. I leave them on because I have to review them later. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of footage to review. But this morning, I got up like I normally did. And a few days later, upon reviewing that audio, as I'm getting out of bed, when you listen to when I send you the, the link, um, you hear for yourself. When I get out of bed, you can hear me get out of bed. It's just a typical morning. I'm just getting up, going for work like we all do. I get up out of bed, and you can hear me rise up out of bed, and then you hear a male voice say, like it's talking to someone else. Who is, who is it talking to when it says, see how fast he stood up? And I know this male voice because when 
Steve and Dawn captured the 430 plus DVPs in the Bothell home. One male voice stood out above all the others. There was one male voice that we were noticing or capturing multiple times, both inside and outside the house, even capturing it in the creek behind the house. This male voice that we captured was the same voice right here. See how fast he stood up, or very eerily similar. And what was interesting about this voice is every time we capture this EVP, it's always talking to someone else. It's always talking to someone else. And a good example would be the infamous video of Stephen Dawn in the hallway setting up monitoring equipment. And one of the male voices says, it's a camera, it's a camera, it's a camera. Same male voice, similar male voice. And it's like he's talking to a, I don't know, an underling, uh, a fellow, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, fellow poker guys, I don't know. But it's saying, see how fast he stood up. That's a very interesting phrase if you look at it, because in that one sentence of see how fast he stood up, it implies, number one, observation. It implies we're studying you. It implies to the underling or to whoever he's talking to, just you should pay attention to that. This is, you should pay attention to how fast he stood up, because who says that? Who, who, who amongst us would, would, would say would say that? Now we're going to get to there's going to be a transition of me living in the home. Now we're looking about August, September, October of 2016. Uh, from here on out, everything that I've experienced here on out never happened in the Bothell House. Here on out. So this is the line where this is new territory, new phenomena, new activity, whatever we want to call it. As I'm now maybe four months now of living in my new place of residence, usually in the morning, or maybe I would say 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning, as I'm laying in bed, I hear a key, a, a female, voice that whispers Keith. That's it. It's Keith. And it's very close to my ear and how I, I mean, it's very close to my, I can feel the breath. You know, when somebody whispers in your ear or tells you a secret, you feel that breath on your earlobe. I can feel that. And it's like, Keith. Very, very female voice. Very female voice um, ambient, angelic, angelic tone, um, ambient sounding. And naturally, you know, my eyes pop open. I'm like, you know, because I just heard my name called to me. Um, I live in a place by myself. Even when I was living in the Bothell home and me and Tina would hear our names called uh, and we would respond somebody was always in the home. You know, Tina, something I would hear my voice or my name called, but it wasn't Tina. Well, at least Tina was in the home or vice versa. There's nobody in the home. So I'm hearing Keith and it's a female voice and I can feel the breath on my ear. And this is, I mean, this, this, this gradual process is very, very subtle because this, this campaign, I, I always call it activity, campaigns because the activity or AKA campaigns have a beginning and the ending. And by ending, I mean, they have a passing of the baton, a transitioning, you know? The succubus are not just going to descend on me right away. It's gonna be a gradual thing. So this key I'm hearing, it's probably the, I mean, I can't think of any other way, no other better way to call my name than what I'm here. I gotta be honest with you. This is probably the best voice or the best enunciation of my name ever. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Psychologist tells us that our own, that our own name, I'm talking about our very own name, 
you Joyce, you Rob, you Don, hearing our own name, our own name said to us is one of the most pleasing things our brain can ever hear. It's when, as, as far as response, as far as response, acknowledgement, guard down, whatever, whatever. Hearing your name called, you know, somebody calls your name, Keith, John, you, there's an inner something in your brain that clicks as a like, yes, huh, what, yeah. You know, very, we're very receptive, you know, when we hear our name called. Not our nickname, not a slander. You know, people get upset if you pronounce their name wrong, if, they, if you say their name and you pronounce it wrong. We all get that inner instinct that I was like, you pronounce my name wrong, you know. We, 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 we want to hear our name heard. We want to hear it heard right. We want to hear it pronounced right because it's our name. This is a one syllable key. When I hear it, it's very subtle. It's very smooth. It's, it, it's smooth. It's just how it comes off. Whatever this is, it's saying it, mouth, tongue, whatever. It's just very smooth. So my eyes open up and I'm like, that's my reaction the first time because I live alone. I should not be hearing my name called in an environment where I live alone. So right here, so after that first instance of hearing my name called, um, that campaign, what I was saying, goes on not every day or every morning, I should say, but maybe four times a week. What started off early in the morning of Keith, while I'm laying in bed, now I can hear or have heard my name Keith while taking a shower, while cooking, while ironing my clothes, uh, while watching TV. And as you can see, not all the Keiths are female voices. I would say most of them are. But there are a few instances where I captured, and as you see here, these are links of where I captured both female and male voice. On the second link, you can see in four seconds. You can see what that at the second link. One voice recorder was able to capture both female and male voice within the same two minutes of each other. The female voice was captured within four seconds on the audio saying Keith. The male voice was caught at one minute and 31 seconds saying Keith. The male voice was very similar to the male voices captured on the day I have moved out the Bothell home. The other keys whispers, September 2016, August 2016, September. Even look at this, January 2017. We're now in January and I'm still hearing the keys, the, the subtle, the subtle keys. I've heard subtle female voice, angelic, ambient at work. I've heard it. Um, multitasking at home. I've heard it multitasking at work or among friends. What you understand about the key voices is they, are, they were happening morning, noon, and night. I hear a female voice whispering Keith in the middle of me ironing my clothes, in the middle of me cooking dinner, seconds before I fall asleep. I hear a female voice whisper my name while I'm sleeping. I hear a female voice, a sexy, angelic voice within seconds of waking up. I even hear it when I'm taking a shower and once again, while at work. One day I was in a room, about 12 people. It was a conference at work. And I'm in, I'm, I'm in a conference room with my coworkers. And my boss is sitting to the right of me. And as the, as the person leading the conference room or leading the meeting is, you know, at the front with his, you know, pointer and giving a presentation, I hear a Keith coming out of my right ear. 
it was a whisper. It was a whisper. It was a female voice that uttered key. Now, this is very interesting because I've had this happen before with the shadow figure sightings. When I heard the key in my right ear, I turned toward the right, and so did my boss. My boss turned toward the right the same time I did. And, and when, I, when he turned back around and saw me facing him, we both, had, we both had this weird look on, on each other's face. I had a weird look on my face because I know what I heard. I was waiting for his response to see, did you hear that? But he sort of played it off because there was nothing to his right. But I know he heard it. Because as soon as I heard it, my mind, my, my, my face turned right. I, I, it, was, it was a weird instinct because I, I was surprised because I was in the office. I was in a room full of people. And it said, he. And then I turned to the right and he, he turned to the right too. He had, he, had, he, he had turned to the right almost simultaneous as I did. And, and, he, and he's looking around. So I, I, I know he heard it, but I just played it off and I didn't sort of give him the reaction. Of, of surprise on my face. Okay, so I mentioned before, I can't overstate it, I have to reiterate it. The voices are always angelic, ambient, female, luscious voices. So now, as I said earlier, campaign or activity, I call them campaigns, there's going to be a transitioning of, you've heard the voice long enough, to, you've sort of gotten you used to hearing your name being called in the middle of the night, in the early morning hours. Um, now it's time to introduce something new to the Keith campaign. So one morning I'm sort of semi-sleep, I'm dreaming, you look at me, look at picture number one. I'm laying on my side. There's a reason why I'm laying on my side. Like most people, we sleep on our side. When I hear the angelic voice say, Keith, see, I'm dreaming, I'm asleep. I'm, 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 I'm half asleep, half awake, but I'm, I'm, I'm asleep. When I hear the angelic voice say, Keith, I instinctively almost for lack of a better word, we're going to use the word trance. I don't know if that's the right word, but we're going to use that. For the lack of a better word, almost like a, a trance, I turn on my back like clockwork. I hear a key. And as soon as I turn on my back, I feel the mattress, the corner of the mattress bed go down, the indentation, like something sat on the bed. I kid you not. And I feel it and I hear the squeaking noise like somebody rested some barbells or something heavy on the, the foot, not the foot of the bed, but the corner, the left corner of the bed. And I feel that. So as soon as I turn on my back after hearing Keith, and then as I'm now sleeping on my back, which I never do, the indentations are coming towards me. Now, this is a massive indentation. This is not the indentation of before with what I call the dominions where the, 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 the paw prints. This is massive. This is, this is the person indentation. This is a heavy indentation and it makes its way towards me, over me, makes its way towards me, over me, and kisses me. I feel a physical kiss on my lips and then poof, it's gone, gone, bye-bye. You know, I wake up because I, the kiss was, uh, that was real. I, you know, when somebody, you know, you were sleeping and somebody either whispered in your ear or, or kissed your forehead or on your lips especially, but you, you're going to wake up, right? And if you live alone like I do, you definitely going to wake up. So I woke up, but... Of course, I'm laying on my back. I'm looking at the ceiling and I'm replaying what could have been a few seconds of Keith, huge mat mattress indentation, and then a smack on the lips. And then gone. Power gone. Okay. 
that start that career or that campaign would happen probably about four times a week after that. Just that of the sleeping on your side, key, turn on your back, huge mattress indentation. Now, there's been a few times, and it's kind of funny, um, where I hear key, right? I feel the mattress indentation. But either they didn't time it right because my work, my clock alarm on my phone goes off. It's time to wake up. When that happens, meaning the, the alarm clock, is, it's, you know, it's time to get up in the morning. When that happens, or a phone ring, then you just feel the mattress, an abrupt rising of the mattress, an abrupt, it's like, uh-oh, interruption gone by. An interruption gone by. The connection is cut. So I'm sleeping, I hear keys, something is making its way towards me, trying to cover me, but the phone ring, it could be my alarm clock, most of us, I know I do, my alarm is on my phone, it's my app, it wakes me up, it's very loud, but obviously it's gonna break me out of whatever concentration I'm in, whatever dream state I'm in, as well as have the, the same effect on whatever it is, is in the room with me, because as soon as they hear that alarm or the phone ring, Poof, they're gone. And, and I really mean that because the mattress raises up fast. Like, huh? Huh? And then you like, you know, I'm I'm like, whoa, 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 what's happened? What, what, what happens? So, but not all the time. Maybe weeks into just hearing keys, and not not every instant involves a kiss on the lips. Not every instance involves a kiss on the forehead or nose or cheeks. I have heard Keith, the mattress indentation, and something, I don't know what it is, throws water on my face. Literally water, like sprinkled water, like it's raining. Like I, when I wake up, my face is wet. I got droplets on my face. And then they're gone. That, that, that's it. That happened maybe three or four times where I hear keys, the mattress indentations, and then mist. It's either droplets or mist. I've, I've been sprayed mist. I've had what you know you feel. We've all had somebody like you know a child or your significant other, somebody you know, get in your face, and you know how a child would just you know you know blow on you, blow on your face like. Like that, I've had to where something after making its way towards me blows in my face. Like, and when I feel it, I feel this mist, this, this, this mist that spreads over my face. And then they're gone. They, they, they take off. They're like, poof, we're gone. Okay. And I don't, and, 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 it, and it's, it's wet. I have to either use the sheets or go to the bathroom to dry my face off. I'm awake now. My face is wet. I literally, it is wet. And I live alone. Then you feel the mattress indentations, like blow on your face. The bed rises up or the mattress rises up. Bam. They're gone. Finally, after many of this, this has happened so many times, so many times, to where after interrupting my sleep or partial sleep, you know, maybe after the 200th time, you know, they say what they call, I forgot what my dad used to say, repetition breeds perfection, where if you just stick to something long enough, it could be anything, it could be anything. If you just stick to something long enough, you eventually want to get it, you eventually want to get it. And that's what, I want, that's what I want to take away from tonight's uh, talk to be, uh, they're just the relentlessness of, if we just keep, we're gonna keep pounding you, keep pounding you. Pound. We're gonna keep. This is there's a there's a means here. There's an end here uh, that they have, knowing that repetition breeds perfection, and the perfection is what I'm going to show soon after of what of them getting what they want. This is a quarter. What they're doing right now is you can say, you know, as my grandmother would say before Thanksgiving, you know, when they had because they, they used to raise turkeys, Thanksgiving turkeys. 
You know, we always ate the turkey on Thanksgiving Day. But grandma and grandpa would start fattening the turkey back in October. You know, you, you, you fatten the turkey before you kill the turkey and eat it or a pig or anything. You, you fatten it up, okay? Just that what they're doing is they're priming you. They're getting me used to hearing my name over and over. They're getting me used to these inexplicable kisses over and over. They're getting me used to this same female voice being heard over and over who says my name better than my mom says it. She does, it does. And repetition breeds perfection. It's, it's the, you can sort of say it's the opposite of what the poltergeist does, the malevolent of what the poltergeist does because the poltergeist is trying to beat down the house occupants psychologically, physically and mentally by the activity, by the onslaught of activity. They're trying to beat me and Tina down or anybody down. They want to beat you down. This is a different method of beating us down or beating me down. This is, you know, the poacher guys is vinegar. They said you can catch more bees with honey than vinegar. The poacher guys uses vinegar to catch. The succubus uses honey to catch. And that's what they're doing. Poker guys, the, the, the succubus, if we, if we call them that, knows it's the same methodology, but it's kinder, it's gentler, sexier, you know, and they got you when your guard is down the most. You're sleeping. You, you're in a trance like state. I don't know what phase of sleeping I'm in, probably the four REM sleep phase or the third, but they got you. They, they're in your dream state. And this is where. Finally, finally, as I'm sleeping, what was once obscure, sort of hazy and fuzzy in my mind and my brain as I'm sleeping, takes full form, full form, manifests. It's like, finally, we got here. We finally got here, Keith. Congratulations, we got here. I've, I've been visiting you for so long, I've been uttering your name for so long. I've been doing all these things so long. You are now have become a willing participant. You don't even fight it anymore. You don't even wake up anymore. You reset your alarm clock to wake you up later. Now I'm going to manifest in front of you because I've been coming before you as images, as abstracts, but now I'm Oh, I'm, I'm here now. And this is what we have been leading to. This is what I have been leading to. In this phase, and I'll probably, probably, this is probably the next to the last phase of it all, of when the succubus or whatever manifests and I see a full form, and I talk about this in my second book, Attachments, book at the Washington State of what I see in front of me is probably without a doubt in my mind, without a doubt, the most beautiful woman in the world. It's, it's like, did I die and go to heaven? Did I, what, 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 wait, what happened? You know, what, what happened? And this is, I mean, the most, you know, it, it, she would put Miss Universe to shame. Miss Universe, Miss Australia, Miss UK, any, all of them. Too. They would have to take a backseat. They, they, they would, I mean, the most beautiful figure in the world is now on top of me saying, Keith, okay, and there's nothing I can do. There's not, matter of fact, there's nothing I want to do because who would want to do something with the most beautiful thing, whether you're male or female, when this is over you on top of you, who would who, who would who would dial 911 for the, for this? Who would scream, get off me for this? Because keep in mind, they're relentless, they know you better than you know yourselves. They've been going through my mind or my file cabinet psychologically for years. They've been studying me, they know what I like. They know what my taste in women are. They know what I appeal to. 
and they're going to give you everything. Your, I mean, your impossible wish that you had from the time you were 14 to the time you are now 51, they're going to grant all of them. They're going, and, and they tell you that. They tell you because now when I was telling you, they would kiss me and it would just be a smack and then put the gun. No, the smacks are not, there's no smacking now. There's no hook, we're gone. They are here and they, and they tell me, well, they, they show you before they tell you. They're there to drain my energy. They're, they're there to drain my essence. And you feel it. One of the things I described when I was still living in the bottle house one night, when I felt something zoom through me. I mean, I, I felt something on the bed rush through me. I felt a sense of, I was telling y'all yesterday, of, you know, those, those electric fences that, you know, that would shock you, but not hurt you, but just sort of shocks you and you're kind of jolted. But um, there's, a, there's maybe a nanosecond of euphoria that sets in and you're sort of, Mini tranquilized, if that makes sense. That's what's about to happen here. When they kiss you, that euphoria, you're that you know, sets in, and you're like, you're frozen. You're, you're frozen. You can't move, and you don't really want to, but your inner spirit, your inner aura, is does. You know, we all have antibody. I call it the spiritual antibody. It knows what's good and what's bad for you, and it's trying to fight, but. Your physical is not really helping it, so it, it, it's, it's, it's handicapped. I'm talking about your physical aura inside you, your, your soul, and your antibody soul that, that fights off these, these malevolent energy draining entities, but it needs your help. But the entity has been swooning you for weeks on out to where now, you're more on its side than your spiritual aura side. They're giving you instant gratification, instant pleasure, and your inner alert system is screaming red alert, red alert, red alert, you know, DEF CON 4, DEF CON 4, you know, Navy SEAL Team 6 to the rescue, and you're, and you're vetoing all that. You're like, because they have appeared and manifested in front of you, and they are there, or, or, or it's there. Now, the first time, it's just one. It was just one. And when she appears or manifests or whatever, she kisses you, and then basically you and her are making love right there. I mean, that's, that's why they're there. But she's draining energy from you. You can feel your body being drained. You can feel while they're kissing you, they're... They're, they're extracting, I, won't, I don't call it air because it's not air. Um, it's, I, I, I'm gonna say it's just energy because when they're done, I'll, and I always say, and I, and I put this in my book, when they're done, when it's done, I feel um, like I've had uh, a gallon of coffee of the most highest caffeinated coffee. Like I've had, a gazillion espresso. That's what I feel like. I am, my body is jittery. I am, my hands, you know, I shouldn't be behind a steering wheel for the first hour of the day because it feels like I just swallowed a gallon of highly caffeinated coffee. And that's how I feel. I'm, I'm you know, I'm head heavy. That terminology of being head heavy, I had to look that up and I found out there's a definition for that because that's what I felt like. My head, was heavy. It wasn't lightheaded. I'm not, you know, I'm not lightheaded. I don't feel faint. I'm head heavy. My my head is like leading before everything I do. It's like I could I could chill over any minute, but not pass out. But I'm just, you know, I need to sit down, get my bearings, find out where north, south, east, and west is, and start my day. Start my normal day because this feels. I'm talking about our timeline, meaning our dimension where we live in 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. In our timeline, this feels instantaneous. 
while you're going through it, it feels like mm, eternity while you're going through it, if that makes sense. The first few visits was, or several, more than a few, several, was always one, one. Like I said, activity, AKA campaign, has a beginning and an end. Once I've been worn down to the point to where now they can extract energy from me, guess what? They, I don't even hear Keith anymore. They stop saying Keith. They don't have to say Keith anymore. Now I'm waking up out of sleep state or I'm, I'm dreaming. They're already there. They're already, meaning one, I'm talking about one. One is already present and she's halfway done. By the time I realize I'm being extracted, she's gotten what she wants or it's gotten what it wants, you know, and, and I keep saying it, I'm trying to say it more than she, because I'm of the firm belief, of course, they don't really look like that. I know that that's going to fall by the wayside pretty soon, as, as, you, as I want to tell you. This was all about disarming. This was all about getting me relaxed, getting me comfortable with the idea. Keith, we want to get you comfortable with the idea of what we're going to do. We need sort of, and it's weird, we sort of need, you have to be a willing participant or not fight us so much. So in order to, to, to mitigate or limit that, we got to appear to you first in this form. That's why we've been saying keep so long. You know, we know what you respond to. So soon or later, they stop saying I find myself feeling the mattress indentations being mounted, being covered, and there's no there's there's no peace whatsoever. There's, there's 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 nothing. I'm laying on my back. I'm waking up on my back, and I never wake up on my back. I'm waking up on my back more and more and more till finally one day, I was sleeping and I woke up or dreaming or and when this happened. I had three visits, three, three, not identical, but they were, they could have, they could have passed as sisters. That's just to say you how beautiful they were or appeared. You could never tell which one was the most beautiful because it seemed the second or third one out of the previous one. They only get better in appearance. I kid you not. The new ones that visited me, that still visit me to this day, they get better in appearance, which I find unbelievable because I've already made the declaration that one was the most beautiful thing ever in the world, but they outdo themselves. And, I, and that's by design. Well, this was an interesting episode where I guess you know, it's almost comical, but it was true. And, 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 and what happened, uh, it was three. And three of them were taking turns on me or with me, taking turns. And one of them must have had to have been, how can I say it, new to this. If that makes sense? Because one of the, the first one scolded her. She scolded her because as she was kissing me, she was kissing me too long. And she was draining more energy from me. I was feeling myself, you know, palpitations, eye fluttering, and all this heavy caffeine, head heavy, nostalgia, euphoric feeling. And I felt my inner body, meaning my, that aura, that, you know, whatever, that soul or whatever trying to go into super overdrive because it couldn't keep up or replenish what they were taking. And then finally the, the, the first one, she scolded the third one. Matter of fact, she got her off me. She's like, no, we don't ever do that. We don't ever do this that long. You cannot do that to them that long. And I was, you know, them, I'm like, okay, you know, 
trying to recoup and gain my myself, my composure. And they just all disappeared. But I heard the conversation. I heard her, I ain't gonna say it was sort of finger pointing, like, but it was a it was a very deep scolding. She's like, no, you don't ever do that that long. We don't do that, you know. And the other one's very, how can I say, submissive, acknowledged, and was like, you know, with her, with her facial expression, she didn't say anything. She said, you know, uh, forgive me, something like that. The next visit, three again, um, always three, uh, the same ones, even the one that got scolded. Um, I find myself, like I said, they don't say Keith anymore. Now it's just me waking up and they're just doing what they do. They just doing what they do. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm half sleep. I don't care. You know, you me turn my backside, whatever. I don't care. You know, they're just doing what, what it is they do. It was interesting while one was on top of me, the other two were sort of, they're on the foot of the bed, you know, foot of the bed, observing or, or whatever. And oh man, it, it was so interesting because I, I I made eye contact with one of them, the first one. And as I'm looking at her, I don't even I, I know I'm not talking to her, but she responds back to me. She says, because I I was thinking it, but she heard it. And I was thinking in my brain as the one was on top of me, uh, where do y'all even come from? Why are y'all even here? And she's looking at me. And before I can get my thought halfway completed, I mean, I'm just thinking this. I even got the full sentence in my brain. She finishes my thought and answers my four questions. And she says, but her mouth is not moving. She's looking dead at me. Her mouth is not moving. She says, they go from city to city, the world over, granting sexual fantasies, fantasies while extracting the male essence. That's a quote. She said they go from city to city, the world over. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, and I'm like, because her mouth is not moving. And I'm like, is she talking to me? Is she can she hear me? Is she? reading my mind, and yeah, that's what she said. Now, a few days or weeks later, number one and number two don't even visit me anymore. It's the third one, the one who got scolded, who, who got scolded by the other two. She visits me frequently. She visits me frequently. And even though her number one or number two are not present, she at times, not all the time, at times does go longer than I know she should. Had they been there, they would have scored her again. But she seems, I don't know, she goes longer. But one time, and, and keep in mind, once they extract from me, once they get done with the, you know, for, for lack of a better word, the, the, the kissing, the love making, once they've extracted from me, there's no congregating and, okay, that's all I talk. No, they, they put, they're gone, they, 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 they're gone. This one stuck around. She, 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 she was done and she, she maneuvered to the, the, the foot of the bed and she's looking dead at me again. She's looking, she's looking at dead at me. And I'm looking at her and, and she's like, and once again, I got a question in my head, but She's finishing my question before I can even formulate it in my head. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of a question and she's beating me to the question by answering it, if that makes sense. She's like, oh, I, I, I came from LA. I, I've come from LA. I've come from Los Angeles. And when I get done with you, I'm going to Vancouver. She said it, I'm going to Vancouver. And I'm like, what, huh? what? are you talking to me? Because once again, her mouth is not moving. Mine is definitely not moving. But our eyes are meeting. We, 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 see in depth. we see it eye to eye. We're looking at each other. And she said where she's come from. 
and where she came from before me, before me. But then she said where she's going after me, you know? And then another episode, another night or early morning, depending on how you want to look at it, same one. And like I see, she's relentless. And even I, like, you know, my body, like, she's just draining. Now she's, now she's just draining me. And I'm just, you know, she just, I mean, she's just draining me. You know, it's like, get it over with, why don't you? She's just draining me. And, I, and one day, I think I said something of, I said, what was the question I asked her? Because she scolded me. She's like, um, um, I said, when is enough going to be enough? Something to that effect. When is enough going to be enough? And she said, shut up. She said, shut up and just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. She said, because if you could have gotten rid of me, this is what she said. It's not, not verbally, this is what her, her brain is saying to me. Said, because if you could have gotten rid of me, you could you you would have done it a long time ago. That's what she said, and I was taken back. She she kind of kind of I felt my manhood type assaulted, or you know she you know I was like oh she kind of cheapened me. She's like just shut up and enjoy, it. because if you could have gotten rid of us, you could you would have done it a long time ago. And she was sort of inclined when we, we're past that phase, the phase of getting rid of me happens early, not later. But we're so well into this, you should just shut up and just enjoy it. And I, and, and I feel embarrassed to say, I, I shut up. I, I was like, oh, okay. So now, like I said, the, the three, the two, the one, take your pick. It, it, it varies. Most come, uh, you know, one visits more than three now. Very rarely do I experience three at one time. That was mostly early on. But one of the questions I wanted to answer before it got asked was, while this is happening, does this by any chance slow down the minions, meaning what I was telling you earlier, the pulsation, the poking and prodding of the rib cage, that stuff that, that was migrating towards your pillow while you slept, that, that, that gave birth to nightmares and night terrors, those shadowy figures. The shadowy figures is what I, I, I refer to them as uh, because I've seen them. And based on the, the, the heartbeats that we were able to acquire, it tends to be, uh, um, it lets me think that's what they are. But does one lessen the other? Do they mean it? If I get a sucky business, does that mean I'm not going to be bombarded by the people on the left? And the answer is no. These two um, factions uh, may seem like they overlap by the fact that they are bombarding me uh, simultaneously. Okay, but it's not like you got them on Monday through Wednesday and we got them on Thursday through Sunday. No, 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 no. They don't, I, I never got the inclination or the idea that the minions on the left would tell the sucker was on the right. He's yours tonight, we're taking the night off or, or vice versa. I never saw them conversate or telepathically conversate together. Uh, I can tell you the Obvious, for obvious reasons, the minions are more brutal. They're the ones who are responsible for the night terrors and the nightmares. There are the pulsation that I feel coming from the bed, uh, the rapid pulsation coming from the bed. And they, they're mean, okay, they're, they're, they're just mean, all right? There's, 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 there's no there's no there's no reasoning with any of these succubus or me, but they're just me. Okay. They have one ultimate remember, they're the one that puts me down the stairs. They're the ones that say, yeah, you push them down the stairs. They're just me. The succubus, even when they appear, and it's probably the reason why they come later in the night or in the morning, 
uh, as when, as like I said, the minions descend on me. As soon as I lay in the bed, they come calling. They come calling. They're prompting on me. They're, they're like a dog who hasn't seen his master all day because he's been at work. He, they're waiting at the door. You know how your dog is waiting at the front door. As soon as you don't like that door, your dog is all over you. The ones on the left, the minion, that's what they are. As soon as I lay down in bed, to, when, if, if I was to in this meeting now and go lay in my bed and watch the Olympics on TV, this would happen. They would be on me like this, like that. That's how relentless they are. They do not pause or slow down because succubus come in later. They, they, they don't care. They don't, they don't even, they, don't, you know, they might all come from the same whatever, but they don't, they don't compare notes. How about that? They don't compare notes. I, I see nothing. I have no data, no telepathic EVP, no nothing that makes me believe they are correlating with each other. I almost feel safe in saying the succubus fear them or despise them, but they're subservient. They, they're on a lower pecking order, if you will. Yeah. Think about that. The succubus are on a lower pecking order. In the animal kingdom, you know how the, the lions get to eat first, and then the vultures come, and then the hyenas come. Well, they they are they are looked down because they didn't earn their kill, right? Hyenas, vultures are looked down by the predators in the animal kingdom because they didn't earn their kill. They feed off the leftovers. And the animal kingdom looks down on them. You see, uh, any animal despises vultures and hyenas because they don't earn the respect of a meal because they don't kill them. They find the meal. The minions are the predators. The succubus are the vultures. They come after. They eat seconds, sloppy seconds. That's the term I like, sloppy seconds. So, and that's what I've been able to observe uh, from them. And that's it. That's the slide. Wow, interesting, Keith. <laughs> Do we um, want to take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back for questions? 